Hi, it's project time. Today's project, well, I don't know how many days it's going to take, but I'm going to get started on it, is we are going to upgrade our water pump. So, this water pump works great, actually. It does a very good job at supplying the water pressure needed to supply the house, the cottage. The only problem is, this thing draws so much power. I think it's, uh, it's 115 volt pump rated at 9.2 amps. So that's like 1100 watts, somewhere around there. But, considering that we've been using it to suction water through this hose line, this hose line that runs along back there and out to the water tank. The inside diameter of this hose is half an inch. That's it. And that's a long travel for half an inch hose. And so, considering how our power system runs when this thing is running, I'm thinking it's, it's actually running at more like 2,000 watts. And so, if we need to run water for any extended period of time, so taking showers, washing dishes, we have to run the generator because the battery bank just doesn't last very long powering, powering this pump. So it's a good pump, but it's really not meant for off-grid applications. So I've been looking around for a better solution, and I found one. So that's going to be the upgrade. We're switching out pumps. It's going to be a whole new pump. To, it's going to be a different way of doing it. But the key is, if it doesn't happen to work, I need to be able to reverse everything and get everything back to this so, you know, we can live our lives. So I think what's going to happen is the outlet line here just connects to this line here. And it's just a, just a real simple um, a hose clamp. And I think yeah, I think this is where I'll hook in, just so it's just screw-on clamp, so I don't have to cut anything or re-splice anything if I have to if I have to revert back to the setup. Yeah. So on this end, this is going to go away. That feed line, that line will be connected via another braided tube down and out that hole where the hose is currently coming out and we'll hook up to the end of this pipe. This is, if you've seen the videos before, this is the one and a quarter inch pipe that I laid down that goes all the way out, you can see it, and then out to the tank. Look. Hi. <laughs> Hi. I'm moving sticks. She's moving sticks. That's what she said. That's that's what she, that's what she does now. She moves sticks. <laughs> I said that's what you do now. You move sticks. Can I move sticks or rocks? Sticks or rocks? Yeah, sticks or rocks. <laughs> so yeah. So if you notice that means I cut out. You know that line is gonna go. That's the inlet line to the to the pressure tank. It's going to come straight out here to this pipe, going from a half inch hose to an inch and a quarter pipe is a big deal because water has a lot of friction actually. So the larger the pipe, the water sort of that doesn't travel along the sides of the pipe that has a lot less friction. So the larger diameter you can go the more water you can flow through there with less effort. Also, suction or vacuum lining a water tank is a lot more inefficient than pushing water. So the new pump isn't going to live in here. The new pump will live inside that tank. Now we tried this before and it failed. But what we tried before was a really, really small pump that wasn't sized for this application at all. So that doesn't count. 
the new pump is over here. It's over in the other shed. This here. This here is the new pump. And this thing's tall too. This is a submersible deep well pump. This is rated at 7.1 amps. So it's just that much more energy efficient and doesn't draw as much power. What's key is there is a built-in start capacitor inside this, which also means when it kicks on, it doesn't spike in, in power use, whereas the other pump absolutely did. That probably would spike to like, I don't know, 2,500 watts. If the batteries were absolutely dead and a generator were running, the generator wouldn't be able to run the battery charger, which is always on whenever the generator is running, and the water pump at the same time. It would cycle until it would, you know, the battery pack would gain enough juice, enough voltage, so that it would pick up and the pump could just run. So that tells me it is drawing a tremendous amount of power and not very efficient at all. So this should be far more efficient just in the motor setup and pump setup itself. So it's got a start cap in there. The motor in here doesn't draw as much running power. But at the same time, from what I've read, people have used pumps like these. Um, these work great for off-grid applications. One of the reasons that it works really, really nicely in off-grid application is that this pumps water out the top here and pushes water. So it's far more efficient in getting the water from the tank to the watershed, to the pressure tank in the watershed. So hopefully between the lower energy need and the far more efficient piping and the more efficient method of pumping, uh, hopefully we can get that power draw way, 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 way down. So it'd be nice to be able to run the water system without having to run the, run the generator. Um, obviously it'll, you know, it'll eat up some juice, but you know, our refrigerator, that, that's rated about 650 watts and that runs all day. You know, when we're, when we're not here, that, you know, that kicks on probably, it'll probably run for a half hour every, uh, after every hour. So a uh, half hour on, hour off. I think that's, that's about, um, how it's performing without having the generator to run that that will run all day into the evening when, after we get home so if that's the case it'd be nice if we could do you know have running water and have this run you know kick on for a minute maybe two minutes at a time so if I, that's that's really that's really all you know that's really how long the pump is running. The, the the other pump, the current pump that we're using it, it when it kicks on, it'll repressurize the tank in about three minutes. Two and a half to three minutes, I think, is, is what it is. And it can do that once without the generator running. That's how much power it's 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 sapping up. In two to three minutes of runtime, it it can do it only once on our battery pack. Whereas our refrigerator runs half hour on every hour all day long. So if we can get the efficiency and energy consumption to around the refrigerator or even anywhere close to it, I mean, 7.1 amps at 115 volts, that's what, 800 something watts, something like that. So it's not that much more than the fridge. And it only, ha you know, hopefully it'll only have to run one to two minutes because we have a larger flow rate with the larger pipe. So I'm hoping this is this would be quite an upgrade. So the steps that need to be taken, obviously the large pipe is already laid out. We have these little fittings up here. Of course, getting back into plumbing, which means it's fittings, fittings, fittings. So the outlet, the outlet here on the pipe is inch and a quarter. So this is going to be an inch and a quarter adapter screw into there with some plumber's putty into this is a three-quarter inch PEX adapter so that will go in there 
with some plover's putty. And then this tube, this three quarter inch tube, will run from the top of that into into the end of the end of the inch and a quarter pipe that's in there. So I have fittings for that as well. So at the end of this pipe, uh, if you saw the previous video, there's already pipe going into the tank and there's a one uh, one way valve, a foot valve in there. So I'm going to cut this pipe right about here. And then into there will be this adapter, which is female threaded, into another PEX three quarter inch threaded adapter. And that will connect the pump to the pipe via that vinyl tube. Now at the watershed, at the end of the pipe over there, there will be another one of these adapters threaded into another three quarter inch PEX adapter. And that will be another vinyl tube connection up. Like I, like I pointed before, up into the watershed and into that um, inlet pipe to the pressure tank. So the fittings, I have the fittings, that should all work, should, and that should be great, hopefully. I'm really hoping, I'm really hoping this, is, this does wonders for our energy consumption. Because, I mean, it's fine, the way we've been living has been fine, just run the generator and take a shower or do the dishes, whatever, and then turn the generator off. But you know, it's just so inefficient and we waste so much fuel doing that. So hopefully we can save save a bit doing using this pump. So this pump is designed to sit inside a four to six inch well. You know, dug into the ground. And this just drops inside it and hangs inside it. Well, we don't have a well, we have a tank. And so in the instructions, to do it that way, what you need to do is drop this pump into a casing that would act like a well. That's what this is for. So this is a six inch riser pipe. This will, the pump will sit inside it. sit inside it like that. There's also another there's also another piece. There's also this guy. So the pump will sit inside that casing. And what that does is when it suctions the water in, it draws the water in, it'll draw it through, it'll draw that water around the body of the, the pump. And that helps in cooling the pump and actually having the water flow across the body of the pump. This little screen area, that's where the that's where the water inlet is. According to the instructions, that's all you need to do. And I was vacillating about it, various methods to attach the pump to this, but I think what's going to happen is <coughs> I have a couple of these rubber straps. I'm just going to drill a couple of holes in the top here. The straps will feed in through there, hook into the, the hanging hooks for the pump, I just call it good. Hang it over the side of the tank. And it'll suspend at the ed at the side of the tank, just a bit off the bottom. It should be fine. So I gotta go through and do up all the uh, all the fittings. So plumber's putty on these, and then I have a uh, primer and cement for both ends of the inch and a quarter white pipe. And then I have to run, since this pump is going to live in that water tank, we have a couple of these heavy duty extension cords. Those are going to have to run from the power shed out to, uh, out to, the, out to the water tank. Yeah. Does that make any sense? It kind of makes sense in my head, I think. It'll change. But yeah. So I'll, I'll start on getting the fittings done. And we'll see how we get. Hopefully it doesn't start to rain. Because if it starts to rain, I'm going inside. Alright. This bit is done. 
very messy because I'm just not the neatest person in the world, but that's great. So that bit's done. I'm gonna go slide one of these on to the line at the end by the power shift. Okay. This fitting is done. I put an elbow on it, but it's got the adapter fitting. Screwed in is the three-quarter PEX fitting, and that'll be great. And if you're curious, yeah, the uh, the three-quarter line will cut flow rate a little bit, but the key is the main length of line is the inch and a quarter, and that's what cuts down all that water friction. So the three-quarter, it it all closes down in the three-quarter going into the pressure tank. So pinching it off at three-quarter is fine. That's not a, that's not as big of a deal. It's it's cutting down on the restricted the restricted diameter across that entire distance. So that's where we get the efficiency. But yeah, this bit is done. Messy job, messy me. That's okay. Now I'm gonna go to the water tank and do the exact same thing, but I gotta cut off cut off a bit over there because I'm not actually going to use the line that's going in along with the foot valve and all that so I'll cut that pull that out put this adapter in there all right this end is done Don't you love my absolutely tidy work <laughs> this looks like a mess but it's fine it'll work so yeah again it's gonna be a vinyl tube hose clamp onto that go up into the tank to the top of the pump to that fitting hose clamp over there is hose clamp to that fitting into the water shed hose clamp into the inlet fitting to the pressure tank then it's run the wiring out got to splice some wires and then go test it but I think that's gonna happen tomorrow because I was thinking about it and I should actually let the, uh, the plumber's putty that's on the fittings on the pump itself to really s dry and set up before getting that submerged in water. So yeah, so I think that's as far as I'm going to get today. But tomorrow I'll finish it up.